A few months ago, I made a video expressing my concerns about the newest Call of Duty game, Black Ops Cold War. In that video, I talked about its troubled development between Sledgehammer and Raven Studios that were supposed to be the main developers of the game, the shift from turning the entire project into a Black Ops title and possibly rebooting it, the amount of developers working on said title that could be damaging to the multiplayer due to the amount of creative differences each studio might have, and many others. I did say that I wouldn't be getting the game, at least for now, because of all these concerns I have about it. But I still had some hope that as the days go on, we'll get more details about Cold War that can convince me to buy the title. Maybe not at launch, but sometime later on. As in, if I ever get my hands on an Xbox Series X. And I do have to admit, there's actually many things about Cold War that caught my interest. And since I made a video pretty much denouncing the whole thing before it even had its trailer up, which funny enough was released days after I made my video, I should probably make another to let people know where I currently stand now with the game three months later. Let's start with the campaign, because this one was the most surprising. So in my video, I said that my concerns on the campaign was the fact that the development had to be swapped with Treyarch Studios and will be turned into a Black Ops title. Given this series is, or was, in a free year development cycle, that would mean work must have already went into Sledgehammer's version of the game before Treyarch took over, leaving Treyarch barely enough time to redo everything in the campaign in order for it to stand as a Black Ops title. The other concern was the fact that it was being rebooted, which if you saw the video, I was very against that idea. I am relieved to say that this game is in fact not a reboot, it is instead a direct sequel to Black Ops 1. So I was kind of right. Now, being given a clear answer to what title we're getting wouldn't necessarily be enough for me to find a campaign interesting, but here is where they sold me on the whole thing. From the details I have heard from Charlie Intel, it seems like they are going completely for a player-driven experience by giving the campaign multiple choices, allowing them to choose where they want to run and gun or go stealthily in missions, side missions, and multiple endings to the game. This is what I've been begging for in a COD campaign since Black Ops 2. I've always wanted them to give the player full control of what they want to do in the story instead of following the usual linear storyline with no inputs from the player. This gives people a reason to go back to the campaign, not just for trophies or difficulty purposes, but to figure out how to get a better ending than what they supposedly got in their first playthrough. I wouldn't be too excited about this though, because we're not completely sure how much of the campaign experience we'll get since they're often beatable at around 4 hours, but I like what I am hearing about it so far. Of course, this is a bit of a concern as well since you're given multiple endings to a game that's supposed to take place between the events of Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2. Does this mean they're going to rewrite the stories going forward? Is this going to cause some serious retcons for the Black Ops series? Who knows? We can only find out when it releases. But that's where I stand now with the campaign. Now, let's get into the zombies. Let me also take this time to clarify why I wasn't very happy about the news of zombies the first time I heard about it in my previous video. As we all know, Black Ops 4 Zombies ended the Aether story with its final DLC map, and we were all made to believe that this would be the last time we would see a Zombies mode from Treyarch ever again. Obviously, we were wrong. But, I wondered why they were making another one after they already wrapped up the story. During the early Cold War leaks, it has been rumored that this Zombies mode would reboot the Aether story. And that did not make me happy. To hear they were supposedly retelling the story again just after the ending of Tog Their Toten, undoing an entire decade of zombie lore and making that impactful ending completely meaningless seriously pissed me off. Thankfully though, I was wrong. Black Ops Cold War Zombies is set in a different universe, but otherwise keeps the old formula intact. After the Aether story ended, Samantha Maxis, 
Yes, the Samantha Maxis ends up in a different universe after escaping the cycle at the end of Togdor Toten. But what she finds out is that despite wiping out the evil from all universes, the zombies have found their way outside of the cycle and they are now attacking the very world she's currently in. And she needs the help of Gregory Weaver, a Black Ops veteran, to help her stop the attack. This story is now called The Dark Aether. So now we know they are telling a completely new story with one character able to connect this one with the old one. Old mechanics such as perks, pack-a-punch, and of course main quests will appear in the game, while new systems like a viable ending, perk upgrades, and armory bring a new spin to the zombie formula, while at the same time not straying itself too far away from what made the mode so great to begin with. There are some things I don't like though. I'm not really into the idea that zombies are integrated into the Black Ops story in a way. Seeing Weaver, Woods, and most likely Mason and Hudson fight zombies in the ruins of Nocturne Toten, I'm sorry but that doesn't really work. Also, having multiplayer characters instead of a zombie exclusive cast for the mode, I don't like that either. Unless they're planning to add zombie characters down the line or during their battle pass seasons, I'd much rather play the modes with characters that have depth and personality than a bunch of known names you kill in multiplayer while sitting in dark corners in a giant field. But besides those issues, I'm looking forward to this new chapter of the fan favorite mode. So far, both the campaign and zombies have convinced me when I wasn't interested in them before. But what has not convinced me is, unfortunately, the multiplayer. I don't want to get into the whole thing, plus I never played the betas to really get a feeling of the game itself. But from what I've seen so far, it looks rough. The guns look very stiff, the hit detections seem off of a few guns, the amount of bullets you shoot at an enemy sometimes doesn't match with the way their health goes down. Now you might ask, what is the deal? Aren't these issues from the alpha and beta? Yes, they are. But to have an alpha be released in September when the launch day is in November, do you realize how short of time that is to polish everything? I won't go as far as to say the multiplayer looks terrible, but compared to what I've seen in Modern Warfare, this is a huge step back. And believe me when I say I'm not one who likes to compare the contents of this game to Modern Warfare's. But even without comparing it, Black Ops Cold War's multiplayer still feels unfinished to me. Whether that's because of how the guns feel, the overall content, or again because of its troubled development. I would personally give it a few months into its lifespan before I ever pick up the multiplayer because this honestly does not make me want to play the mode. And I'm certainly not putting myself through another year of battle pass progression. I'm done with that. So that's where I currently stand with Black Ops Cold War. I think I will definitely have some fun with the campaign and explore all the endings in my half for me. Zombies is, well, zombies, and I will definitely have that be my most played mode of the game. But the multiplayer needs a lot of work before I ever pick that one up. With this change of opinion in mind, does that mean I'll get the game? Yes, but not immediately. I'll give it a few weeks, see how everything goes, and decide if my $60, uh, sorry, $70, is worth spending on this game. Now I ask you guys, what do you think of Black Ops Cold War now? Has it convinced you into buying it? Has it not? What modes are you looking forward to playing? And what do you think will happen during the game's lifespan with its season and battle passes? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching, and Treyarch... What have we swallowed that worry mastered, you cowards?